I don't think I realized that. Am I correct that it has been 25 years since you've released an official album? Like your last official album was night that came out officially was 1998. Oh, I didn't know that. Good information. Yeah. So, I mean, I get obviously you've been doing festivals and DJing and you've got guerrilla warfare coming out. But I guess the obvious first question I was going to ask was, you know, in terms of putting out a full album, it's been a minute. Like, why now? What's the timing? It's definitely a departure from what people have known you to do before. Yeah. Well, I, um, DJ Diesel, the dubstep dad, is the hardest genre of, of the EDM scene. And, you know, I don't like to take credit, but it's not all me. You know, I play mm-hmm. as DJ. It's always been a DJ job to make the hot songs, deliver it to the fans, keep them jamming. So, you know, when a lot of these kids submit their music, I'm like, man, who is this kid? And, you know, my partner, Brian, bit, man, this kid only has a thousand followers. I'm like, what? No, no, no. So it's, even though it's my album, I'm also doing it, you know, to showcase all the other talent. Like we, I got 10 incredible collaborators. I'm going to try to memorize them. I see Heritage, my favorite, Jessica Autofred, Crank That Company, CeeLo, Sultan, Rated R, Shazzy Cosmos, BRG, and Blackway. I hope I didn't forget anybody, but these are incredible artists, and they're going to make this out. Like, it's a definitely an album you can ride to, you can bang out to, and actually work out to. And you just want to, you know, help help really, you know, showcase these, you know, to the collaborators. Well, speaking of festivals, I mean, I'm very curious about how you got into dubstep. Wasn't there some kind of mind blowing, life changing experience you had when you went to see, I think it was Skrillex or someone like that yeah. at a festival? Yeah, because what got me interested in the DJ game was Tiesto. Mm. But that the one twenty eight was not really my thing and had a couple of offers where, hey, man, we'll give you some songs to play. I was like, ah, not really my thing. I won't be passionate about it. And then, you know, I was trying to hip hop, what, you know, uh, you know, uh, open format. Uh, and then I went to see Skrillex in Miami. And he kind of had the hip hop thing going with the hard sounds. I was like, you know what? This right here is what I want to do. And then I met my best friend, Brian Body. He really, really walked me into the dubstep. We went to see Nightmare and we went to see Nitty and all of those guys and all the young kids. And Carnage also played a you know big part in that. And just the hard, hard sounds like this is what this is what I want to be right here. You know the the ding 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 ding. ding that's cool, but that's not me. I like to you make a hard face like you want to ah like you want to just push somebody out of the way or you just want to bump shoulders with somebody. So that's why I chose that dubstep. How have you been accepted in the EDM or the dubstep scene? You had a lot of success in hip hop in the nineties. You sort of bucked the odds being one of the few people in sports to make that transition, have big hits in hip hop, but this is a whole new world. How have you been accepted when you've done the festivals, the DJ and your own festival? We, uh, I, I started out like everybody else. I uh, started from the, um, well, they put me in the celebrity circuit. So it was kind of rough, but once, once people saw what I was able to do and I got to, you know, get get put in front of some eyes. I, I think we, we kind of, Brian and myself, we kind of earned our respect. We, uh, our mission is to just make, give, make you rock out. I want you to jam out. I want you to have fun. It's not, up. I'm not about promoting myself and look, who is that? Because when I DJ, it gives me the same adrenaline rush as a playoff championship game. That's why I do it. You know, for 10 years after I retired, I didn't have that. I would get in the spurts. You go to a restaurant, oh, they go shut. Mm. And it's done. I'm like, ah, need it more. So when I went to CTS to perform in 100,000, they did that do, 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 do. And I was like, I've never seen nothing like this before. The biggest thing I seen was the Up and Smoke tour with Eminem and Dre. That was like 40, 50,000. But Tiesto, I want to say, I don't want to throw out the wrong number. There's like a half a million people out there. Wow. Jumping up and down, I said, "This feels like a championship parade." That's... And then a couple, and a couple people say, "Hey, oh, Shaq, what's up? Hey, man, they go Shaq." And like I was like, "Oh, so it was kind of it was his thing, but it felt like my thing." And and then when I rode up to the thing, because I broke in, and I parked by the fireworks, so the guys that's managed me now, they came out, "Yeah, hey, fuck it, park there, there, there. Like, "Hey, man, I'm sorry, Shaq." Oh, hey, Shaq. I was like, "I mean, no disrespect. I just want to watch the show." It's like you by yourself? I was like, "Yeah, by myself." I guess they expect me to have an entourage, but they saw how cool I was. And I, I went up in the box and I got to saw that. 
And I said, hey, what do you guys do? Oh, this is our festival. I said, oh, here's my chance. Hey, I want to be a DJ. <laughs> you, I want, uh, I want to ask you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chad. And they said, oh, you want to be a celebrity DJ like Paris Hill? And I was like, oh, mm. my girl Paris. I said, okay, no problem. Then I came back the next year, stayed in touch, parked in the same place. I asked them, nah, man, we, don't, we, we can't help you out. And in the third year, I said, hey, I want to do it. So Joe was like, oh, you're serious? Okay. So they, they didn't give me a great slot. They put me in the daytime, and I really had a good performance. So then I'm they became managers. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was I wanted to ask you. I thought it was really interesting. You said during that ten years you were retired. Ever it sound were you like in kind of a a funk? Were you kind of like feeling down? Yes, I don't like to use the D word because I know a lot of people are really going through that stuff, and I really have nothing to like make me feel like that. But yes, I, I was definitely in a funk. So, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like how music got you out of that? Well, it, it did. Music, music was the only thing that got me. Like, you know, I work and I do commercials and all that, but when you go home and you sit and you have all this, there's nothing there. Like, like after a game, after playing a game, the, the fifteen thousand arena that can last me all night. Man, you have forty points and you did this and you beat out boom, boom, boom. Like that can last you, but. You know, this, oh, what's up, Shaq? Like, it's like just getting out, like an eyedropper and going, ah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, taking some Patron and just going, ah, just putting it on your tongue. So, you know, the DJ thing definitely uh, brought my uh, spirits up a lot. Are you saying you were kind of missing the the fanfare of the celebrity life or per performing for crowds in your own way? wouldn't call it celebrity life because I don't consider myself a celebrity. I denounce myself as being a celebrity. Those people are crazy. Don't want to be in that box. But from 13 to 39, that's all I knew. You know, at, you know, 13, oh, they got some 611 kid coming in here. And then it's just like DJ. You have to you have to earn their respect. And so now that I earn their respect, man, you go know, watch that kid play. And then it went from 500 people to 1,000 people waiting for you at the gym. Like, woo, and then you go to college and it's fifteen dollars, like, oh, but you gotta earn their respect. And then the NBA, thirty four thousand, but you gotta earn their respect. And then you finally win a championship, it's three in a row, take a year off and then go win another one, the parades and like our first parade in LA is about two hundred and fifty thousand. Then the second one about three hundred thousand. Then the third one they said it was it was it was a million people there. So that's all I know. And then I retired. Gone. Never to be had like that again. You know, I would show up at a couple of speaking engagements and, you know, get 30 minutes of, you know, but it's more at the beginning. And then they listen to you talking and at the end. When you're being a DJ, it's nonstop. When you're playing basketball, it's nonstop. So I was definitely missing it. Absolutely. Well, it's interesting that you talk about, you know, from age 13, that's all you knew. I wondered, I hope you don't mind me asking about this, but, you know, do you have any thoughts about, Aaron Carter, because, you know, he he started around that age. And I, I believe you guys, actually, obviously, you did the song, the video together. And you, did you guys started, stay in touch? He actually started at my house. Him, Instinct, the Backstreet Boys, I had a studio at my house. All those guys recorded their demos for free. Uh, when he asked me to do the video, I did the video. I went viral before viral was even mentioned. No. I, I would see him every now and then, but no, we, 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 did, we did stay in touch. But when I heard the news, I was definitely sad because... I know when he was a kid, his family, they've always been, been nice to me. And his brother was definitely, a, you know, a sad thing. Absolutely. Did you relate in any way, in any way, to sort of the idea that it's hard to grow up in the public eye, evolve in the public eye as a famous <laughs> figure? I won't use the word celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yes and no. Because, you know, when you realize there's more people suffering than what you have, I said to myself, stop being a brat and man up. That's the other side. My father was a drill sergeant. Mm. Like, I live a great life because I listen to my parents. I'm very successful. So my problems are not as important as somebody that really has problems. So I, I can look in the mirror and say, shut the hell up. Figure it out. Like, like I don't, I don't, I don't go below bottom because I can't, because I know somebody right now listening to this video that doesn't have as much as we have. And I say we, because your apartment is spectacular. So like, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so, you know, it's people that don't have as much as we have, and they're really, really suffering. And 
I look at myself and I say, am I really suffering or are you being a brat? So stop being a brat and just man it up. That's just the military drill sergeant upbringing in me. So when you say was I down, I was down, but I can't allow myself to go below zero. I was down, I was down, but as I said to myself these words, it could be worse. So shut the hell up and figure it out. And I don't want to, you know, be like, oh, I did. No, stop it. You just figure it out. So I never want people to feel sorry for me. I can't feel sorry for myself because I know there's somebody out there right now that just can't figure it out, just can't get it done. And, you know, I really, really, you know, pray for those people. Absolutely. Is that why you pursued a side career in law enforcement because of the drill sergeant in background you have? No, my law enforcement thing is, so when I was growing up, my father made me do a report from A to Z of what I wanted to be. A was a basketball player. B was a basketball player. C was a cop. D was a detective. E, entrepreneur. F, G was a gangster, believe it or not. <laughs> H was a house husband. I want to marry a rich princess. So <laughs> towards the end of my career, I was like, what do I want to do? Like, I'm a dreamer. And I was like, I want to be a sheriff. So I look it up, sheriff. You don't have to go to law enforcement. Good. Boom, boom, boom. I like the position. Mm, I can win. But now when it's dealing with leadership, okay, you win the check, but are your troops going to respect you? So I said, okay, you know what? Let me do the same thing they did so they know and understand that I have some law enforcement experience. So I went to a reserve academy, and they didn't no shortcuts. I had to do everything they had to do. Gig line had to be straight. You know, the boots had to be shot. And everybody knows that. So I went through the same academy that they went through. So I just wanted to have that in case I did run for sheriff and win. I said, I know what you're going through. I know what you understand. And I understand law enforcement politics. So that's what that was about. The the list you had of possible careers from whatever to house husband, where was DJ or musician on that? Because I've read that you got turntables when you were real young. That was kind of like an early goal of yours. I did because, you know, all of us are products of our environment. I don't know how you became a writer, but how I always loved music. Par par parents had uh, cookouts every weekend, but I used to go to concerts when I was young. And my favorite concert was Public Enemy. And they came out and the lights came on and then Terminator X, who was a DJ. Terminator X, he had, a, he, he had the Flash Gordon song that he mixed. Terminator X, ah, 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 ah. And I was up front, and I was like, and I watched him do it on turntable. I was like, man. So I went home and said, Dad, I went to the pawn shop, got these uh, the, the turntables. Can you help me get them? How much? $200. I ain't got no $200. You better go get a job. McDonald's for two days. That didn't work out. And then I was cutting grass, washing cars, and I saved enough money to get those turntables. And now I had to figure out how to do that. And, you know, I had a couple other friends that were DJs, and my dad wasn't a DJ, but he knew how to work the record player. And, I had to teach myself a lot. So it was actually a, a fun process. And I became pretty good DJ at high school parties, college parties, and stuff like that. But I got away from it when Jive said, we'll give you $10 million to do three albums. I was like, uh, <laughs> I'll do it. I mean, come on. I yeah. actually want to ask, because those records I mentioned in the hip hop world were all very successful. Jive, you know, got their investment back. What happened to the fourth record, the Super Friends record? Because that was like a stuff of legend. What happened with that? I was a little too vulgar on that record. It wasn't me. I was. I wanted to prove that, hey, I'm a rapper. And I still have it. I may release some stuff here and there, but it just got to be a little too vulgar. And then the record, the two companies I was fighting with had a fight. So it just kind of got scrapped. But I was, I, was, I, was, I was really hard on that record. And it... And you, it was it your choice to pull it? Because I thought it was supposed to actually come out on 9-11 of 2001 yeah. and then October of that year. And then I don't know. I think advances went out because I've seen like things on like Discogs or whatever, like $1,000 or whatever. Yeah, I think the uh, two record companies started fighting and then we just got kind of scratched it. And I, that was the time when I met Bill Jackson. He's like, you want to win these championships, you got to focus. So I kind of put everything on the back burner. But do you think any of it, maybe not all of it, but when I look at, I have a list of all the names of people like Dr. Dre, Nate Dogg, uh, I mean, Sean Stockman, Ludacris. This was an all-star thing. Do you think maybe there's a way you can incorporate into your DJ sets or something? Uh, maybe. We we haven't really, really talked about it. But, you know, I want to kind of focus on the, the youngsters that don't really have a name. 
Like it's easy for me to say, hey, I'm Shaq. Here's Dr. Dre on it and get people to, to buy it. But I want these youngsters to have the chance so they can get a pink room. I want Jessica Autofit to have a pink room just like yours. Absolutely. She's welcome to come by. You got a DJ here. We could have a festival, festival party in here. What are yeah. your plans? You got like other, um, you know, uh, I believe you have a tour coming up or your own festival coming up. Yeah. Uh, Shaq Bass All Stars. We've been doing that for a couple of years where we give young artists a chance to showcase. And believe it or not, I'm never, I'm never last on any of my shows. I don't want to like you young guys go and then let me show you how the superstar does it. Nope. I'm always in the middle. I want one of the kids to just have that ability to close it out. Like, hey, this is your chance to close it out. Shaq will bring them in. <laughs> now you so we, we're, we're definitely doing that, and we're definitely going to continue to do shows. And I want all the parents to know that the dubstep dad will always make sure your kids have a great time. So I know if they're asking for that money, dubstep dad will, will send them home nice and happy. The dubstep dad. Well, before I let you go, I, I was really inspired by all the stuff you were talking about, you know, getting out of your funk or whatever or you know do you have any advice for anyone who's you know in their 30s 40s 50s or whatever and like one door is closing career-wise or whatever about how you can find a new passion find a new lease on life i'll just say sit back and really think about what makes you happy or has made you happy and if you have a dream that you haven't fulfilled go chase it you know, every, everything that I've done in my career is me being on punishment, saying I'm going to do it. On certain days, I wanted to be Dr. J. On other days, I wanted to be LL Cool J. Mm -hmm. On other days, I want to be the smartest philosopher in the world. On other days, I want to be Bill Gates. So, <laughs> everything, so everything that I do is just, uh, you know, me focusing on my dream. So and it, if it doesn't happen, as quickly as you want it to happen, that doesn't mean give up. That means keep trying or just, you know, change the process of how, how you're going. Because even though I'm DJ Diesel, we've been doing this for four or five years now. So it's mm -hmm. like the first two years, they were, oh, Shaq. Okay, uh, well, you know, once we got the opportunity to get into a championship arena, a.k.a. Lollapalooza, and that people see us, then they say, okay, this, this, this guy, Shaq and Brian and their team and medium rare, their championship quality. Let's start giving them great shows. Did you have, I mean, you seem to have such self-belief, but was there ever a time where you thought like, this isn't going to work out. I can't get in at my age with my background. I can't get into the dubstep world and be no, taken seriously. No, because it, it's, 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 it's uh, never about me. Like, I've been a star since 18 years old. Can't get no bigger. Can only get smaller by doing dumb stuff. This is definitely not dumb. So I uh, just want to make sure the kids have a great time. And we come with the music that they like. Now, I know if I would have half that it and used my celebrity status, I would have been I would have been in and out real quickly. But they can tell that we take it seriously and you know we do a good thing. But it's never about me. But you know, I, I think when they call me the dub step dad, I think that that's that's saying that we know you're old. But you're a cool dad, so we accept your dad. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing it when I'm sixty, but <laughs> hopefully, you know, hopefully I still have the ability to just go out there, and just make kids jump up and down. I'm sure you will be, or you'll be doing something else. You'll be Bill Gates or something. It seems like the sky, no pun intended, as I look at you, the sky is the limit for you. So, um, congratulations, DJ Diesel, on um, the uh, on uh, the release of Guerrilla Warfare and everything you else have going on. It's been a real honor to speak with you. It's 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 yeah. been really it's been it's put me in a good mood. And I may have to copy that room for one of my daughters. That room is that room is fabulous.